Live from Studio 7E in Rockefeller Center, this is News for New York. Good evening. We're following breaking news tonight. The Florida pastor who planned to burn the Koran says he has changed his mind and he won't do it thanks to a deal with the imam of that proposed mosque near Ground Zero. But the developer denies a deal with that pastor. However, he has received a lucrative proposal from Donald Trump. Linda Picaro is sorting out the latest twists in this mosque controversy. There is a lot, lot going on tonight, Sue and Chuck. Pastor Terry Jones of Florida held an impromptu press conference just about an hour ago. He was talking about his controversial plan to burn the Quran on Saturday, September 11th, bringing condemnation from around the world, including the White House. Well, moments ago, he announced that he has now decided to cancel the burning of the Quran and that he plans to fly to New York to meet with the imam heading the proposal to build a mosque and community center center near ground zero. Now, since then, we are just finding out that even though he said he had word from the imam that the location would be moved, we now understand from an imam in Florida that there was an idea to offer a meeting between Imam Faisal Abdul Rauf, who is heading the proposed Cordoba house at Park Place in Lower Manhattan near ground zero, two blocks from ground zero, and Pastor Jones. But we are understanding from the developer of that property that there is no deal in place to move that site. The pastor had offered to cancel the plans to burn the Quran if the site was moved, and he said he had uh, an agreement from the imam to do that. But again, at this point, the developer of the site says that there is no agreement at this point to move the proposed Islamic Cultural Center in Lower Manhattan. So it remains to be seen what Pastor Jones' plans are for this Saturday in light of that. Now, we should also tell you that there is a letter now from Donald Trump. I have it actually right here, where he offers to buy the property. He says that he offers the price that the developer paid plus 25 percent, and he says that this is because he believes this would end a very serious, inflammatory, and highly divisive situation. So a lot going on, the offer from Donald Trump and Pastor Jones saying that there was an agreement to move the site, but the developer denies that. That's the latest from the newsroom. I'm Linda Beccaro. Back to you. All right, Linda, thank you. Now, our coverage will continue in a few minutes when we go live to Gainesville, Florida, to get the latest on the pastor who set off an international firestorm ahead of 9-11. A brush fire on Staten Island, a rage for a second day, is out tonight. Firefighters were sent back to Great Kills Park earlier this afternoon after high winds reignited those flames. It took about 200 firefighters about eight hours to get that fire under control. Four firefighters were injured, but they're expected to be okay, and no evacuations have been reported. Rafael Moran is at the top of the rock right now, and Rafael, any rain coming soon? Well, we do have some rain coming soon, but unfortunately, it's not going to be quite enough to really put a dent in any of the dry conditions that we've seen over the past several months here. We're dealing with a rain deficit of over 10 inches in Central Park. We do have a chance for rain over the weekend, but that's probably going to amount to a little more than half an inch if we're lucky. What we need is a prolonged extended period of rain, maybe a tropical system moving up the coast, giving us that drenching downpour or even a slow moving area of low pressure. We don't have that on the horizon anytime soon, but we do have some cooler weather moving in tonight, already dealing with jacket weather out here at the top of the rock. I'll have all the details on your extended forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Sue? All right, Raphael, we'll see you then. New Jersey issued a statewide drought advisory because of the extremely dry conditions and lack of rain. Residents all over the state are being asked to voluntarily conserve water. Brian Thompson has more from Coster. It's a, it's, a, it's a poor crop. At the farm in Closter, Ted Solid took me through his nearly five-acre patch of corn and pumpkins. There's no corn. Well, this not much only. anyway. This summer's dearth of rain played havoc with what little corn could grow, and he means little. There's no corn on the stalk. There's no growth on the stalk. The nearby Oradell Reservoir is an equally dramatic testament to this summer's drought, an exposed shoreline with a water level seven feet below full. Water birds stand, not float. We expect September, October to be a little bit drier, but we don't expect it to be this dry going into it. But dry it is, witness this lawn. While nearby, automatic sprinklers make sure another lawn stays green. In fact, it is a lawn likely overwatered and an area where this homeowner could help his neighbors. People drown their lawns, not just overwater them. For now, the state's drought watch asks for only voluntary conservation. Back at the farm, that means paying extra for labor to use hoses to hand water plants instead of sprinkler systems. But they can't do without watering here. I mean, I think we had like 30 or 40 days over 90 degrees. And I said you'd have to be watering every day, every day. 
If it continues like this, the next step would be a drought warning, but mandatory restrictions, at least on a statewide basis, would require an emergency declaration from the governor. And as one state DEP official told me, we're not there yet. In Harrington Park, Brian Thompson, News 4 New York. Well, New York senators are adding their voices to those wanting a ticker tape parade here in the city to thank the troops. Yesterday, News 4 started asking the questions of political leaders whether a parade would be held for the troops coming home after years of service in Iraq. And Jonathan Deans is here now with the latest development for us. Jonathan. Chuck, Sue, the senators say whatever your view on the Iraq war, the troops deserve thanks for their service with a parade up the Canyon of Heroes. <clears throat> Two New York heavyweights today called for a parade up Broadway for soldiers coming home from Iraq. Senator Schumer says the troops deserve the honor. I can think of nothing more appropriate than to have New Yorkers and Americans coast to coast thank our soldiers for their selfless sacrifice by cheering them on in the Canyon of Heroes. Senator Gillibrand, too, said every day she thinks of their service and sacrifice. Certainly a parade would personify the name Canyon of Heroes and is a fitting tribute that I would love to see happen. With the president last month announcing an end to combat operations in Iraq, it was City Council Speaker Quinn yesterday, an anti-Iraq war critic, who said it was important that the city start talking about how to honor the soldiers returning home. If there was a grander gesture, I would want the city to make it. That is the grandest gesture we make. One veterans group issued a statement saying, no parade now, wait for when all troops are home safely. A Pentagon spokesman said the military would welcome the celebration. With 47,000 troops still in Iraq, the mayor has not yet commented as to if or when a parade should be held. We are told City Hall is reaching out to various groups for ideas on how best to proceed. The city had a parade after the first Gulf War and has honored championship teams here in recent years. NBC's Richard Angle was with the last combat troops as they left Iraq into Kuwait. He spoke with us yesterday. Even if you don't agree with why they were sent there or what they accomplished, I think a, a, a lot of Americans would support that. Yesterday, Congressman Peter King of Long Island also weighed in calling for a parade. No one has told us a possible date as leaders are just beginning conversations now with the respective military groups. Chuck and Sue. All right, Jonathan, thank you. Well, public schools in New Jersey could soon get hundreds of millions of dollars in new funding. The state met today's deadline to apply for federal money for education jobs. Officials say the $268 million would probably have come to New Jersey anyway, but with Congress controlling how the money's spent. Now state officials will decide how to distribute the money to school districts. New Jersey recently lost out on a $400 million education grant, possibly because of an error on the application. A former Nassau County legislator said today that he is ending his bid for the New York State Senate amid accusations he stalked an ex-girlfriend. David Mejias spent a night in jail last week after allegedly following his ex-girlfriend in her car, then forcing her to pull over and screaming at her. Today, the Democrat denied any wrongdoing but said the accusations would overshadow his campaign. The voters deserve a real debate on the issues. My continued candidacy would replace a meaningful debate about the future of our great state with distraction and sensationalism. Long Island deserves better. Mejias will still appear on the ballot in the Democratic primary, but today he asked his supporters to vote for his opponent, Francesca Carlo. Well, tonight marks one of the holiest days of the Jewish calendar, Rosh Hashanah. The holiday begins at sundown, ushering in the year 5771 on the Hebrew calendar. A few hours ago, congregants from Temple Sharei Tefillah gathered for a tashlish service to throw bread into the East River, symbolically casting off their sins from last year. Well, still ahead on News 4 at 6, we're going to take you live to Gainesville, Florida, for the latest on our top story. That pastor calling off his Koran burning on 9-11. Also tonight, a massive recall on a breakfast staple, milk. We'll tell you which brands are in question. Plus, an unwanted house guest in the Bronx busted by the police this morning. Stay connected with NBC New York. If you're on Twitter, follow us. On Facebook, become a fan. And now you can sign up for breaking news alerts by texting NY Breaking to 639710. She took on the big banks and passed landmark credit card reform to stop abuse and protect consumers. A tireless advocate for women and families, she's delivered Medicare coverage for annual mammograms, cracked down on domestic violence, 
and increased aid for college. And in tough times, she championed the Second Avenue subway and Queens Connector that will create thousands of good jobs for New Yorkers. Carolyn Maloney, nobody's congresswoman but yours. I'm Carolyn Maloney, and I approve this message. Pop is in the house. On NFL Game Days, get more with Papa John's free topping football. Buy an extra large cheese pizza at regular menu price and get all your favorite toppings free. More toppings, more flavor, free. Order at PapaJohns.com. New inventory. New equipment. New trucks. New hires. New space. New markets. Achievement seizes new opportunity. Go to pnc.com slash business loans to see how we can help your cash flow situation. PNC, for the achiever in us all. When you're disabled, you really need your social security disability benefits. We'll deal with the government. You have enough to worry about. Everywhere, all across America. Bender and Bender is America's most successful social security disability advocates. Hey, did you know that in the race for attorney general, there's only one Democrat who's actually served as assistant AG? Only Eric Danalo. Danalo's prosecuted corruption and violence, so we know he's not going to back down to Albany or the NRA. And as Spitzer's deputy, it was Danalo who led the fight to hold Wall Street accountable before it was cool. And only Danalo took on big insurance and got health care for 400,000 New Yorkers. That's why the Daily News is endorsing Danalo as the only one with the right experience for the job. For AG, go with Danalo. Tonight, helping young people through the pain of Katrina, inspiring them to create beautiful images, a new way of making a difference in New Orleans. NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams. Tonight and anytime on your DVR. Well, we have a problem in an upstate milk processing plant, and it's triggered a voluntary milk recall in our area. New York State inspectors found what they call failed pasteurization equipment in the Midland Foods plant near Albany uh, that could allow listeria and uh, salmonella to spread. So far, there are no reports of illnesses. The brands affected are Midland Farms, Corrado's Market, Jersey Dairy Farms, and Trade Fair Premium. The recall covers all container sizes from pints to gallons. They were sold in stores all across our area. Return the milk to the store for a full refund. And for the entire recall list, as well as product codes, go to NBCNewYork.com and search Milk Recall. Police had to call in backup for an unusual home invasion earlier this morning in the Bronx. Now, there is the suspect. Here he is, a young raccoon. It somehow made it into a family's home on Shakespeare Avenue. Police were called in to capture it, and they did. We called to find out where it ended up, but neither the police nor animal control could tell us where it is right now. And still ahead as we continue with Fashion Week, we have a look at the first day of the trend-setting tradition on Maria Sansone, with Maria Sansone, in fact. She may be wearing one, I don't know. But first, back to our top story, we go live to Florida for the latest developments in that planned Quran burning that's now called off. Also, here's tonight's primetime lineup. We'll be right back. This fall, Nate Burgess is your go-to guy. You never know when Nate's crate is going to show up. The Nate Burgess Show premieres September 13th. He is How are so you? cute. Life by Design. The New York Times says Eric Schneiderman has courage, a strong voice, and a deep commitment to ethical government. The Times endorses Eric for Attorney General for repealing the Rockefeller drug laws. For supporting women's rights. For promoting transparency. For curbing the power of dirty money. The Times supports Eric for his sound judgment. Legal expertise. Independence. Because he's a reformer. We all agree. Eric Schneiderman is the best choice for Attorney General. Minute Clinic at CVS Pharmacy makes it easy to get a flu shot, even with my busy schedule. I got my flu shot on Saturday afternoon. Wouldn't work best for me. We got flu shots for the whole family, and we didn't even have to make an appointment. At Minute Clinic, you can get a flu shot when it's convenient for you. We're open every day, evenings and weekends, too. No appointment necessary. And we accept most insurance. Flu shots your way at Minute Clinic inside select CVS pharmacies. What's lurking under the bread? 
What's hiding under the sauce? What's buried among the veggies? What are many sandwich chains and fast food places covering up? Cheap chicken. Chicken that's ground up and mixed with seaweed extract, soy, and fat. How do you think they make cheap chicken? Want a chicken sandwich that doesn't scare you? Demand Boar's Head Ever Roast, the highest quality pure chicken breast. It's the best roast chicken ever. Last season, our city of New Orleans at last watched the Saints capture the Lombardi Trophy. And now, we can't wait to get back to football. The Super Bowl champion Saints take on the Vikings tonight. Special start time, 7.30 Eastern on NBC. With adjustable beds, you can raise or lower your head and legs. The problem is they're too expensive. Not anymore. My Power Bob, complete with Bob Alpedic 8, is only $15.98 in king size. Theirs is $44.98. It's embarrassing. Mine is only $15.98. They're the ones who should be embarrassed. Yours is $2,900 less. And I guarantee you'll sleep just as well on mine. Buy in-store or online at mybobs.com. People are worried about jobs. From health care mandates to higher taxes, Washington keeps creating uncertainty for small businesses. And there's a fear in, in, in the minds of business owners as to whether or not um, they should hire. Linda McMahon understands we need jobs. And until people are working, not much else matters. She gets it. And she'll make the politicians get it, too. I know she has what it takes, because uh, she's proven that. I'm Linda McMahon, and I approve this message. Well, today starts the number one holiday on a fashionista's calendar. It's Fashion Week. All the hot spring summer 2011 looks will debut at the new home of Fashion Week, Lincoln Center. Maria Sansone was there for opening day. Well, Sue, strap on your stilettos. It's the first day of Fashion Week here in a brand new venue, a new and improved location here at Lincoln Center. And as you can see, if you take a look around, it's very spacious. Now, like Bryant Park, we are under tents, but there is a lot more room. There's a lot more booths. There's room for more designers, which means more shows and more fashion. So this year, Fashion Week is bigger and better than ever. One of the things I really love is the self-service check-in. So you don't see the big long lines of people waiting for the shows. You just come on in, pop your ticket in there, and you're on your way. And of course, what would Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week be without a gorgeous Mercedes? Look at that thing. And also, it kind of gives you an idea of just how big this venue is under the tents here. You could fit many, many of those Mercedes here. So I'll be reporting all week it's a girl's dream, the glitz and glamour of Fashion Week. Back to you guys in the studio. All right, Maria Sansone, thank you. Now, for all you fashionistas out there, go to NBCNewYork.com for the latest on the Fashion Week events. We have pictures and videos from the catwalk to the uber-fabulous parties. Just go to the NBCNewYork.com forward slash the thread. And Rafael Miranda is looking very fashionable at the top of the rock right now. Checking once again on the weather. Rafael. Fashionably chilly right now. It's about 20 degrees cooler than what we had yesterday, guys. Lots of cloud cover today. It was a mostly cloudy day. We had some peaks of sunshine, but the big story was the chill. Much more of a fall feel outside. You can see it's breezy here at the top of the rock, but it's still a gorgeous night. Come out and enjoy the view. You can see a great shot there of the Empire State Building. Just don't forget to bring a jacket or maybe even a light sweater will do it. Temperatures made it only into the 60s and 70s today. Our high temperatures. Temperature was 70 in the park, well below average for a change, a nice change from after what's been a brutally hot summer, and this morning's low was 61 degrees. Now, as we take a look at tonight's weather headlines, you'll see that the chill is the main story overnight. Summer heat says goodbye. Overnight lows drop down to the 50s around the region, 50s even in the city, low 50s, perhaps 40s in the suburbs. And then for the weekend forecast, we do have a mixture of good and bad news. Right now, we're at 68 in the park, 69 in East Patchogue, but already cooling down to the 50s in the Hudson Valley, so definitely need the layers at least long sleeves if you're heading out there this evening. Look at the satellite picture shows nice and quiet across northeast. Lots of clouds dominating the weather picture, but it's a high pressure situation, so not expecting any rain. It will be a crisp night ahead, and the breeze continues overnight. It's going to die down just a little bit, but then tomorrow morning, a cool start, lots of clouds. 
We are looking for more sunshine for the afternoon, and the breeze continues out of the northwest with winds around 10 to 15 miles per hour. If you're headed out to the U.S. Open tonight, bring the jacket. Temperature is down to the mid-60s, but the breeze makes it feel just a bit cooler than that. Mostly cloudy skies, probably don't have to worry about any rain. Now, we're keeping a close eye on Igor. Igor has been downgraded to a tropical depression, so not a tropical storm anymore, but this storm has the potential to strengthen back to tropical storm or perhaps hurricane status by the beginning of next week. Overnight lows, 49 in Elmville, 53 in Chester, around 59 in the city. And then tomorrow, more sunshine for the afternoon. Still breezy, though, and a high temperature back to the mid-70s. Not feeling quite as cool as it did today. Now, as we take a look ahead for Saturday, a cool start to the weekend, but lots of sunshine and less breezy conditions make it a very pleasant afternoon. And that's the best half we have for the weekend for you. You can see by Sunday, a cold front approaches, bringing with it a chance for a couple of showers, especially late in the day. Here's a look at the next seven days. 74 for your high temperature for tomorrow with more sunshine as the day goes goes on. Great timing for Saturday, 77 degrees, beautiful sunshine, and finally the breeze eases off. For Sunday, not a total washout. The cold front approaches late in the day. I think we have a shower chance probably afternoon. That's going to last into Sunday night, and then by Monday we dry things out. But unfortunately, we could use a really good soaking rain. As we were talking about before, Chuck, this one probably just going to give us about a quarter an inch, maybe a half an inch of rain, not putting a big dent in any of the drought conditions. Chuck, Sue? All right, All right Raphael, thank you so much. Now, now we'd like it to introduce you to the newest member of the News 4 family, not Siafa. <laughs> this is Jack Emanuel, son of Paisy Chang and her husband, Phil. Jack was born yesterday morning at 615. He's six pound, five ounces, and uh, the family is said to be doing well. Well, Jack, welcome to the world. Delighted to have you. Siafa Lewis is straight ahead with sports. Absolutely. Coming up in sports, three-time Super Bowl champion and NFL MVP Tom Brady was involved in a serious car crash this morning in Boston. We'll have the latest on one of football's biggest stars as the season gets underway. And the Mets struggling on the field, always winners off it. They give back at ground zero. Next in sports on News 4 New York at 6. Hey everyone, I'm Billy Bush. And I'm Kid Hoover, and coming September 13th, we are hosting Access Hollywood Live, a brand new daytime show. The big news. Big time style. Everything pop culture. Access Hollywood Live. Love it, live it. Live. Closed captioning provided by Toyota. Get something you can trust. Visit toyota.com. Top of the Rock Observation Deck. New York's most breathtaking view. This is your New York. Top of the Rock Observation Deck at Rockefeller Center. If you were a candy man, then I'd tell you so so. You're so sweet. Sweet million is sweeter than sweet, which is sweet. Sweet million from the New York Lottery. Your best chance to win a million for a dollar. When you're disabled, you really need your Social Security disability benefits. We'll deal with the government. You have enough to worry about. We get paid, sure, but only after you get paid. Binder and Binder, America's most successful Social Security disability advocates. When a child is in danger, we teach them to run away. But what if the danger is at home and they have no place to run? I'm Kathleen Rice, and as Nassau District Attorney, we created Safe Place for victims of domestic violence. As Attorney General, I'll work to make luring a child on the internet a felony for when they don't even realize that they need to run. They come from different walks of life. I can build a car. I was a salesman. A prosecutor. Financial advisor. Real people with one thing in common. I was laid off. It's very tough to get a job right now. We are living on faith and living on love right now. But there's nothing more American and a second chance. I just am not gonna quit. The ultimate job interview returns. You roll all that into a ball and say, we're gonna make it. The Apprentice premieres next Thursday, 9, 8 central on NBC. No matter what life throws at you, you can take the heat until it turns into heartburn. You've got what it takes, Zantac. It's strong, fast, lasting relief. So let them turn up the heat. You can stop that heartburn cold, Zantac. Are you paying for a body wash that's 85% water? With Olay, challenge that. Olay Body Wash has two times the combined cleansers and moisturizers and 25% less water than the top-selling body wash. Soft, smooth skin with Olay. Who's your cable provider? 
Time Warner Cable. Time Warner Cable. Time Warner Cable. When you have bad weather, does it affect your picture? Oh, yeah, that's happened. All of a sudden, it scrambles. It's like big cubes. The sound starts to zerp, burp, derp. And then they move quickly, like. Sometimes there'll be a head here, and then the body will be a little over to the left. And then the picture will just freeze. It's not good. I don't think it's difficult to ask for something and pay for it and get the service that you expect. I should get what I pay for. All right, back down to our top story. The leader of that small Florida church says he is canceling plans to burn copies of the Koran on September 11th because the imam that proposed the mosque near Ground Zero, he says, says he's moving the mosque. I have his word that he will move the mosque to a different location. The Amman said they would, they cannot move it tomorrow, but that they would guarantee that the mosque would be moved from the present location. Now, Imam Rauf just released a statement saying there is no such agreement that he has never spoken to Pastor Jones at all about this and that he has no plans to move the mosque. Jeff Patterson joins us live from Gainesville, Florida right now. He's covering the story. And what is the latest down there, Jeff? Well, good evening, Chuck. As a matter of fact, there seems to be some kind of a miscommunication. I've just been speaking with Iman Mohammed Masri, who represents an Islamic foundation that represents a number of Muslims here in Central Florida. And what he says that he worked out with Pastor Jones was to fly him up to New York City to have a meeting with the imam up there to talk about plans for moving the mosque, just to have a conversation, just to have a, a discussion about those plans, that no deal has been brokered to prevent the construction of the Islamic Center there in the shadow of Ground Zero. And I've just spoken with uh, Mohammed Masri again, who says that um, he was very clear in his wording to Pastor Jones. However, just about 20 minutes ago, Pastor Jones came out again and spoke to the media and says it is his clear understanding that he has worked out a deal that that mosque will not be built. So we have to find out what's going to go forward from here, what kind of wording went back and forth, and now what will happen here in Gainesville on Saturday as to whether or not Pastor Jones and his very small congregation here in rural central Florida will go forward with their plans to burn the copies of the Quran or whether this meeting with Pastor Jones and the Imam in New York is enough to prevent that action, Chuck. Jeff, I'm just sort of curious, uh, how do people there in Gainesville feel about Pastor Jones? Is, is he an important pastor in the area? Is he regarded as sort of an eccentric? Um, it is a very small congregation, perhaps only as many as 50 people. I'm told last Sunday in church there were only 30 people in the service. As a matter of fact, there is a United Methodist Church just down the street here that represents 4,000 members. It is less than a half mile from this church. They have 1,500 people there at four different sermons on any given Sunday, Chuck. They were planning on holding their own service tomorrow, an interdenominal, interdenominational meeting with a number of faiths. They expect several thousand people at that meeting. They're calling it a meeting of hope and unity uh, to get together. And they have also had a meeting uh, here yesterday uh, at a church in Gainesville. 325 people showed up on very short notice to pray that this action would stop here in Gainesville. So very small congregation here represented by one pastor, large congregations in the area condemning this action. Several ministers, uh, Baptist ministers showed up here today. Ministers of other faiths, in addition to the imam, showed up here asking Pastor Jones uh, to not go forward. So you can tell just by the size of the congregations there is a difference, Chuck. All right, Jeff Patterson, thank you. Jeff Patterson reporting from Gainesville, Florida. NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams will pick up the story in a few minutes with the international outrage over this plant burning. Plus, hear how people overseas are reacting to the news that it's been called off. The Verizon Fios Sports Desk is brought to you by Verizon Fios. It's time for New York's highest rated TV and internet service. It's time for Fios. Seattle Lewis is here and it's the opening game for the football season tonight. I am so psyched too. I'm a huge football fan. So for me and those like me, it's one of the best sporting days of the year because the NFL is back. The season gets underway in just about two hours when the defending Super Bowl champion Saints take on Brett Favre and the Vikings right here on for New York. But all the talk in the NFL today was around Tom Brady. The Patriots superstar quarterback was involved in a two-car accident this morning in Boston. It happened in the back Bay neighborhood around 6.30 a.m., just three blocks from Brady's home. A red minivan allegedly ran a red light, and Brady's black Audi sedan T-boned that other car, lifting it off the ground and knocking over a light pole in the process. Now, Brady showed up for practice shortly thereafter, and according to teammates, showed no visible signs of being involved in an accident. 
the paint, the pads rather, open the season Sunday at home against the Bengals and all signs point to Brady being under center. Now, of course, the ninth anniversary of September 11th is this Saturday, and since the tragedy, the Mets have been closely associated with the city's healing process following those horrific events. So, today... It's just going to mean the world to them. It's literally going to make their year. Today, Josh Tolley, Bobby Parnell, and Dylan G were on hand at the Tribute World Trade Center Visitor Center to package gift baskets for the crew of the USS New York. Over six tons of steel from the World Trade Center site was used to help forge the ship's bow, forever linking the ship to the city of New York. And for the ball players, the events of nine years ago still hit close to home. I was a young kid and, um, you know, on September 11th, but I remember it like it was yesterday, going to high school and, you know, now being put in this environment and, you know, really coming down and seeing what it is, what had happened. I, I can't fathom thinking of, uh, you know, what it was like on September 11th. Like Josh said, you know, you remember it like it was yesterday, and, uh, you know, my father's fire chief back home, so it's, uh, you know, it touched home. To come out here and to, to be able to be a part of this and to put together these packages and, uh, you know, just give back as much as we can, it's, you know, it's very important for me, and I know it's very important for these guys. And, um, you know, we, we like to do as much as we can for the community, and especially for the volunteer firefighters and the firefighters around here. And, uh, you know, it's a great opportunity. Every single crew member on board that ship feels a special bond with not only the friends and the family of the victims of 9-11, but also with the people of the greater New York City area. And that's whether they're originally from New York or not. They just feel that extra special bond with this place. Tremendous to see those young athletes giving back in unbelievable nine years since those the, the horrible day. It's, it's peculiar to hear somebody say, I was a kid just then. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, is not that much time it's gone by? All right, Seattle, thank you. Up next on uh, NBC Nightly News, Brian Williams is live in New Orleans as football fans prepare for a big, easy kickoff. And then join us at 7 for New York Nightly News on non New York Nonstop. Thanks for joining us now on this program. Good night.